is first a brief introduction to the subject of reincarnation research, then methods of reincarnation investigations, a typical case and analysis of data, then possible implications and summary. And I'll see how much time do I have so that I can uh, present accordingly. How much time do I have? You can uh, go till uh, 8 30 or so. If you okay, so my uh, lecture can be up to 8.20 or so, and then 15 minutes 15 minutes for your uh, um, question answers? Yeah, yeah, that's right. All right. Okay, then uh, now this investigation of cases started way back in the 1920s uh, by some Indian uh, uh, researchers. But uh, till about 1959, there were only 26 cases. I don't know whether you can see this slide or not. But uh, <clears throat> so these uh, uh, cases were only 26 before 19. So I have divided it into two eras, pre-1960 and post-1960. Because 1960, the actual research started very uh, rigorously in this area. Now, uh, the University of Virginia started first, Professor Ian Stevenson. He came to India in 1961, and then uh, he uh, expanded his research in different countries. And I joined him in 1973, first as a research assistant, and then subsequently as a colleague, and then I was with him for a very long time. And we have done lots of work and treaded really uh, many places. And uh, actual research, if you ask me, it will surprise you all that uh, it was the first investigation that we have come across was by the Emperor Aurangzeb in the early 1980, sorry, 18th century. And uh, he learned of a case, although he himself was a Muslim, he got interested into it. He called the witnesses in his uh, court and then um, interviewed both the sides. And then he was convinced the best part or the, the, the corresponding uh, part of this case was that the child also had a birthmark to which I'll be referring to in this particular uh, case, uh, in this particular lecture. Now, before I start census of cases that are available so far after the 1960, uh, period. Total cases on record, I'm referring to reported cases. There may be many more. So 2,650, out of which 2,078 were from uh, Asia, out of which 50, almost 500, almost 25% from uh, was done by us in uh, NIMAS uh, with my, me and my associates. Then cases have been also reported and studied from other countries, Myanmar, Turkey, Sri Lanka, Lebanon, etc., and Japan, and uh, non-tribal areas in uh, US, tribal areas, and in Europe, Canada, Africa, and Oceania. This is about 572 cases. Now, a typical case, what happens is a child between the ages of generally uh, between the ages of two and five uh, starts talking about a previous life. He says, make some statements, insists that I was so-and-so in my previous life. This is not my family. Sometimes he outrightly rejects. And uh, with a few statements, uh, sometimes uh, people are not able to uh, make much of those out of these statements, but gradually, on child's insistence, the parents try to uh, verify the claims of the child who says, I was so-and-so, this is my, and gives very specific, makes specific statements. And then after a time period, the uh, parents are sort of forced to take the child to the uh, uh, mentioned place and sometimes the other family hears about this child's statements and they come to meet the child. So eventually the two families concerned meet and uh, then uh, they of course uh, take uh, the tests of the child in their own way. They make 
certain things or ask him certain questions uh, to satisfy themselves whether this is the same child uh, who the child rem remembers. That means the previous personality. We call them previous personality, the person uh, whose uh, uh, life the child claims to remember. And uh, uh, then uh, the two families concerned meet. And uh, in some cases, there's a difference in uh, status or some other reasons that I'll come to gradually uh, over the next few minutes. Uh, the two families concerned generally stop meeting after some time, but uh, they do continue in some cases. Hello. Uh, there is a discontinuity. Uh, hello. Okay, these children, they make statements about the previous life, which includes name of the previous person's life, uh, person's uh, name, then mentions his mode of death. PP means here, personality, previous personality, talks about, I mean, uh, mentions about his mode of death, and then display unusual behavior. And then, which is shown in the play activities, or child mimics his previous life, or phobias uh, related to the death of previous personality, uh, uh, whether it's a person or the weapon or uh, uh, the place where the child was uh, killed in the previous or remembered life. And he also may have some unusual physical features such as facial features or his gait or posture and birthmarks and birth defects. Now, Coming to the methods, what we do is we conduct multiple interviews in a team of two or more qualified persons. When I say multiple uh, uh, informants uh, on both the sides, actually, uh, uh, on the subject side, that is the child who remembers and the person whose life he remembers, both the families, we can uh, conduct interviews. First, we go to the child's side generally and then take a note of whatever he is said by the time he reached there. And that's the reason why uh, we uh, interview multiple uh, informants because one person may not may be biased or whatever. And more persons, when we interview more than one people, in fact, in some cases, as, as many as 41 uh, informants we had study, uh, interviewed, but generally, uh, on both the sides, whoever is available to give his testimony, we record it. And then after having recorded, and also whenever it's feasible for us, we uh, uh, observe the behavior of the child uh, when we are present. And uh, when the two families concerned, sometimes we have taken the child to the previous side also and see his behavior there also and what kind of emotions or if or he behaves with them. Then we interview uh, first-hand inf informants on both the sides and also neutral informants so that the bias is eliminated from here. Then we also examine the documents pertaining to the dates of birth of the subject, then date of death and mode of death, etc. of the previous personality. And we also conduct follow-up interviews. Now, hospital, uh, 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 records we check in order to match the uh, or uh, uh, calculate the intermission between the two lives and also when we see the birthmarks and birth defects to see the location of the wounds and match them with the birthmarks on the child. Then the types of cases that we have investigated, twins, twin cases, where one or both the twins remember previous lives. And it may be a, a monozygotic twin or twins or dizygotics. I'll not be uh, touching on that today. Then sex change cases we have, and non topical sex change. Then change in religion, birthmarks and birth defects. Uh, I'll uh, give you examples of a couple of uh, sex change cases and then birthmarks and birth defects. I'll a few examples only. Then illustrative case reports, 
uh, sex change cases first. The first child was uh, female to male. He died uh, in an old age and in a different place, although it was the same family case. But this child, as a child, showed very uh, conspicuous uh, uh, habits or uh, behavior features. For example, he was very young, but he acted like an old lady. He would always uh, rebuke his sister for, uh, 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 for uh, wearing fashionable clothes or doing tubelets, etc. In addition to that, he also had a birthmark, a white hair here on the uh, I can show you on the uh, on his cheek, and then uh, uh, this was about female to male, and he has he had many female characteristics. Very shy child, and uh, would uh, very like that old lady. He would ask her hookah or uh, because she, she died of a fracture of leg in old age, and somebody had told that uh, if you use tobacco, you will be fine. So she used to uh, smoke hookah, and this child also had an urge when he was young. Of course, he was never provided one, but he did, uh, he did ask for it. Now, the next child is a female to uh, male to female case, and you can see also her uh, facial features, and she acted like a male uh, child, and she would rebuke and use very bad foul language. Uh, and very uh, masculine uh, language and uh, also her physique was like that. Uh, very briefly, I'm telling you about these cases. Then birthmarks and birth defective cases. This I'll skip because uh, now the next one is, this is about a person uh, in Farukhabad who was uh, standing at a tea stall late in the night and uh, sometime late in the night and uh, somebody came and uh, shot at him from a close range. And uh, whether it was a, uh, he was the target or by mistake he was shot, but he had, when he was born, he had these marks, marks on his chest. And then we consulted the uh, post-mortem re uh, report and the doctor and Professor Stevens and both of them sat together in uh, reproduce this figure from the post-mortem report, which matches precisely with the uh, birthmarks on the child. Next is a child from Manpuri, UP. He, uh, when he was young in the previous life, his father was uh, cutting fodder. And uh, this child was trying to put his had, was trying to feed the fodder into the uh, machine. Father did not notice him and he went on uh, uh, cutting the fodder and this child's hand was caught in the machine. Uh, he, sub he survived that but subsequently he uh, after a year he died of some other illness. When he was young <coughs> uh, somebody from the other village came and uh, saw his fingers. And this is a, by the way, very, very rare uh, defect. It's called brachydactyly, which is very, very rare. And uh, generally it's both hands, but he has this, and he only has the stumps of the uh, right hand. And uh, then the two families concerned eventually met and the child was able to recognize the family, the uh, family members. And then he was taken to, in fact, uh, <clears throat> we also, in, had taken him to the previous family's uh, house and he uh, kind of behaved like a member and he was more comfortable in that family rather than his own family. And so that's about the birth defects. Now, what we do with the, after collecting the data, we analyze the uh, data. Uh, we analyze the data for, uh, uh, for a group of cases to uh, decipher or see the recurrent features in the cases. Uh, and out of, and then we also uh, analyze individual cases to find out the alternative interpretations for them. Under this <coughs> interpretations, we have normal interpretations and also paranormal interpretations. Under normal interpretation, huh, then when we do the uh, group analysis, we found certain features across the cultures, what we call the universal features. That is age of first speaking about previous life, 
these children talk start talking between the ages of 2 and 4 years of age then they continue till about 8 years of age of course there may be outliers on both the sides then uh, frequency of mention of mood of death was very high in this all these children and high frequency of violent mode of death in the previous life these are two different things frequency of mention of mode of death 74% children mentioned how they died in the previous life but uh, when we actually checked with the actual frequency of violent death, it was far higher than the uh, violent death rate in the uh, general population of that country. For example, in my case, when I did my study, it was only 6 to 7% in the general population, whereas in my cases, it was 48% uh, violent deaths. Now, culture-specific uh, cases, uh, for example, uh, features, uh, median intermission, for example, uh, varied in across cultures. It was six months in Lebanon. It was 15 months in India, 141 years in uh, USA. Sex change cases, no cases in uh, Lebanon were found. India, 9%. Myanmar or Burma, 33%. Proportion of solved versus unsolved cases. Uh, it was 80% cases were solved in Myanmar, 77% uh, of our cases in India were so solved, and 20% was uh, solved in the uh, US, and 80% uh, were uh, remained unsolved. Now, interpretations of the individual cases, as I said, uh, we take into con consideration no under normal interpretations, fraud, that's the first thing. Then we have to check why the person is uh, making up a story or uh, con uh, contriving a case. So fraud, uh, we see the motivation, why would, and the other features that are present in the case. We have a very few cases, very few uh, uh, fraudulent case cases, but uh, we very uh, carefully admit, I mean, the. Uh, examine uh, for this hypothesis then once that is eliminated we also look for fantasy whether the child is uh, fantasizing a life uh, for uh, different reasons and then imposing it on himself but then uh, we saw as we saw in the previous uh, slide that uh, a majority of the cases were solved in our case uh, in our uh, uh, group so uh, you cannot verify one's fantasies and then place a uh, matching uh, previous personality. So these two are very easily eliminated. Then we come to paramnesia. Uh, paramnesia is when the two families concerned meet and uh, they exchange the uh, information and sometimes they credit the child with more information from their own knowledge uh, rather than the child has actually spoken. Uh, that could be for various reasons. We eliminate that also. Then we come to cryptomnesia. Cryptomnesia is a source amnesia. This means when the child is uh, very young or the family members would have learned about the normal, uh, through the normal channels, uh, about the murder or um, mode of death of the person. And then... Uh, fed it to the child or communicated it to the child uh, directly or indirectly. But this is very less like or outsider would have come to the village or their house who would have mentioned about the, uh, casually mentioned about the mode of death of this uh, person. But just about the uh, mentioning about the mode of death, other verifiable details that are given by the child uh, that is not possible. So we uh, we have other uh, criteria also for elimination of this. Then we come to the genetic memory. Uh, in most of the cases, this the uh, subjects are not even the lineal descendants of the uh, same uh, uh, person. They are from a different family. Sometimes, as I said, there are uh, different castes, different religions, or a different. Uh, uh, they are almost always, there are few same family cases, but they have other uh, uh, positive features. I'm talking about the cases where the, they are not even linearly uh, related to the subject's family. And this can very easily be set aside uh, for one reason this, 
and another reason is the person before uh, dying will not be able to pass his genes to the next uh, person uh, in the uh, family. Now, the other interpretation we take into consideration is paranormal interpretations. Under this, we consider ESP and personation, which means the child is uh, collecting this information through uh, extrasensory perception, telepathically with the other family, from the other family, and then personating that on his own personality. That means he's uh, collecting the information and pretending to be that person or believing that he is that person. But uh, other than this, we haven't found uh, any uh, ESP or uh, uh, ESP uh, abilities in, the, in these children. And uh, all these uh, ESP impersonation uh, can very again be set aside because these uh, exist independently. And uh, uh, then we come to the possession. That means the ch child is being, has been possessed by a re uh, I mean, incarnate spirit. And then he uh, sort of speaks to the children, this child or, uh, who remembers the previous life. We set that aside and then come to the reincarnation. By process of elimination, we set aside all these uh, interpretations that I have just mentioned normal and paranormal. And then we are left with the reincarnation hypothesis. There could be other uh, features also that I'm uh, sort of skipping now. Now, re recurrent features across cultures and culture-specific features we have already done. Uh, age at first speaking, and I said, I think I'll skip, skip that because we have already mentioned this. And uh, okay, culture-specific features are median interval. Personality is death in subject's birth. That also we have already uh, covered in another slide. Now, uh, many people think that it's encouraged by the family. The child speaks about the previous life and uh, they gain a uh, lot of uh, uh, publicity and all. But in most of the cases, we have seen that People actually, the parents do not like to talk to these uh, uh, these children to talk about a previous life. They ignore their statements about previous life. That's why sometimes they are not uh, even taken to the previous, uh, or the parents don't even make an effort to take the child to the previous life, a previous family, for the fear of that they may lose him. That will come to the uh, on the next slide. They ignore the statements in a mildest form and they don't uh, encourage the child. Then verbally told him not to speak about previous life. Then sometimes they deride or scold the child for making such claims and uh, child uh, children are suppressed. And then they also make take such rituals to suppress the memories. For that, what they do is they'll take them to mantravadis or some people who would try to uh, put some kind of uh, psychological suggestion to the child that if you talk, this will happen. Or in some way, they give some mantras to the family, and then the child uh, that they, he should he or she should speak, stop talking. Then there's another very common thing that they do in the northern in India, particularly, they rot rotate the child counterclockwise on the potter's wheel so that his memories are undone. And we don't know whether because of that or because the uh, potter's wheel is uh, uh, spins so high or so with a high speed that the child stops talking about it, whether they, he actually forgets or not, we do not know because the, uh, his behavior features continue much beyond the uh, statements of his uh, uh, or imaged memories. And some people even, speak uh, medical help. I remember a case was brought to me in Bangalore and uh, the people, uh, they had tried all sorts of things. And then uh, this child was, was sent to me. And uh, in fact, uh, he was given some medicine and he start, had uh, started uh, 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 this epileptic fits uh, as a result of that medication that was given to him. So uh, why they suppress these memories? Because they believe 
that the previous life memories are uh, uh, very harmful to the child, then they fear that the subject would be uh, he will be claimed by the previous uh, family, or they also fear that the subject would die young if he remembers a previous life. So these are the kind of beliefs they have, and they also don't like public attention. It's real nuisance for them. When we go, uh, we sometimes had very uh, difficult time convincing them that we are not going to, you know, harm your child. We are just researchers because sometimes they feel that uh, we are government agencies and then uh, probably they'll have some ill uh, uh, influence on the family. They're very scared. So normally they are not very happy to have a child who speaks about a previous life, uh, barring a few. Then fear that, as I said, previous personality family would claim the child. And uh, although it doesn't have in many cases and on religious grounds, they uh, don't believe in this. Uh, although we have a few Muslim cases, uh, but the people generally suppress their cases. They don't allow the child to talk. In one case, uh, they had even boycotted the family and they had kind of, uh, uh, they had to move from that uh, place to another place outside the village. Then fear of being viewed as exploiting is because many times if there's a social uh, uh, distance between the two families, then the if the previous family is very highly placed, they think that they'll be uh, exploiting the child where these people actually don't like this and they don't want to be uh, viewed as exploiting the case. Uh, they think that uh, people are, uh, uh, that we are making a case to get some gains from the previous family. Then what are the implications? I'll run quickly run over it. Now, uh, I think this is coming in the way I could take it this much earlier. Understanding unusual behavior of infancy and early childhood in the absence of known causes or explanations. For example, phobias of childhood. Children who die, uh, let's say, violently, or uh, uh, they would have a generalized phobia uh, of the let's say knife of the person, as I said early, uh, although there's no reason for him to be scared of these persons if they see them. Then unexpected cravings or addictions in childhood. Uh, I remember having, a, there was a case child who was uh, very young, but he asked for uh, uh, alcohol at a very young age. And he would play, actually mimic that. He will take some uh, bottles, small bottles, put some water, different colors, and then uh, he will pretend that he's drinking alcohol. So it started at a very uh, early age and there was nobody who was, the family was teetotaler. So uh, he had no uh, modeling available to him in the family. Childhood sexuality, uh, if uh, they, they die young or uh, in a very uh, sexually active uh, age, uh, some of them have shown uh, sexual precocity, as we call it. Then skills not learned in early childhood. And they show uh, many of us uh, are quite aware of these child prodigy cases. But just child prodigy itself is not uh, uh, indicative or evidence of previous life. But if in addition to the previous life memories, if a child is showing some uh, other skills, then uh, uh, that is again, uh, uh, we can understand in terms of uh, unusual behavior. Then confusion about gender, gender and identity because of this sex, sex change. I've shown you only two cases uh, as a uh, kind of... Then uh, next, understanding medical anomalies in the absence of known causes or explanations for example birthmarks uh, we go through this very uh, systematically whether there was a history we suggested uh, that would have uh, generated these birthmarks then congenital defects which are just shown and differences in monozygotic twins 
uh, wherein they have similar uh, intrauterine uh, uh, environment. Then uh, their uh, environment in the family is also same. And still they have uh, differences uh, between them. Now progress, what we have made since uh, 1961, systematic verification of claims, then cross-cultural studies and analysis in which we found universal features, culture specific features. And then we have uh, been you know, uh, studying twins, uh, sex change cases, birth match, birthmark and birth, to name a few. We are reincarnation then Professor Stevenson published a very uh, comprehensive uh, two volumes book where reincarnation and biology intersect. And uh, as uh, uh, the uh, uh, Dr. Buria uh, mentioned about uh, my two books. Uh, and then uh, before I close, I would close with two disclaimers that the interpretation of reincarnation is presented as a supplement to the present knowledge of genetics and environmental influences. It's not presented as a challenge or replacement of existing knowledge. Now, to sum up, major research in reincarnation began in the 1960s, nearly 2000, and 600 reported cases of different types have been investigated and analyzed uh, across cultures. Analysis reveals some universal features as well as culture-specific features. And then current focus, current meaning now, uh, for the few years we have started, but we are still uh, uh, consolidating the data. Current focus is on cases of the birthmarks and birth defects and twins. Reincarnation seems to be the best among the contesting interpretations to call for account for all the features considered together. Because each of the uh, 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 interpretations that I have listed earlier, each one has a uh, weakness and does not or cannot uh, take into consideration all the features that have been shown in this, uh, uh, have been shown in the, by these children. Finding supplement and not replacing the existing, findings supplement, not replacing the existing knowledge, genetics and environmental factors in understanding anomalous conditions in general and mental health conditions in particular. Thank you very much. Yes, so thank you very much, uh, Dr. Sijan. So it was uh, interesting. Uh, I would request all the participants, uh, if there are any questions, uh, uh, they can either uh, directly ask or uh, they can uh, put in the chat box also. I uh, will take it back accordingly. So, Should I ask the question? Yes, please. Okay. Uh, well, my first question was, and uh, I would like to thank you first for this talk, um, <clears throat> about how do you get to know about the children um, do their parents get in touch with you and uh, in this age of internet and information is there a better means of reaching out to such children india wide if we ever want to initiate a large scale study across the country at least okay the first question to answer the first question uh, actually uh, we had Initially, the University of Virginia, they had put up the uh, ads in the newspapers. Those days, there was no um, uh, digital uh, media at all. This is way back in the 60s I'm talking about. So they had put up uh, inform I an mean, uh, ad in the newspapers. Uh, some uh, response had come through, and then uh, they started going to investigate the cases. And when we were investigating the cases, uh, one case led to the uh, discovery of the next because we used to go in a group and a small crowd would get around us and then uh, they'll say what are you doing here in our village or they out of curiosity they'll say what we are doing so they say oh i also know of a case so this was in a very elementary st stage and we used to note sometimes 
uh, as Professor Stevenson used to tell me, that uh, whatever piece of papers they had, they would uh, make a note of the subjects details, where do they live? And uh, sometimes the informant of, for the case would know about the previous personality. Sometimes they would not, they would just know about the subjects. So we would uh, then trace those. And while studying that case, we would uh, learn of some other cases. So that's how it started. Now, if you want to now, of course, uh, media has also, uh, it, it has uh, both the sides, uh, both sides of the coin, I would say. Uh, this actually has uh, in some ways uh, spoiled the thing in the sense uh, that many people pick up the information from the thing and then they try to uh, show the uh, this thing. But I think the best that would be to go into those places. We have gone to very, very remote areas also those days uh, where uh, we had to walk a lot of, um, cover a lot of mileage. And now, of course, roads are uh, good. And I think we have to uh, uh, go uh, approach to these people uh, where we, because a lot of media, they are sort of killing the cases. Mm -hmm. They will bring the uh, family and then publicity and then all those things. And some people are not very happy about it. But I think one can definitely make an approach and uh, study cases. What I have said is we have just started reported cases of 2,600. Uh, uh, that number is very limited considering the uh, total population of this globe. So uh, I think one can uh, go with very uh, cautious this thing. You will have to take extra precautions. We used to take a uh, lot of precautions in interpreting these case in cases. So one has to I think be very careful because nowadays this uh, uh, media, I mean, this digital thing has uh, reached the village, the remote villages also. So how far uh, we can rely on their testimony and how much is one has to learn how to uh, differentiate between the, between the two uh, statements or two testimony and uh, uh, the falsification of the uh, information that we get. Thank you very much. Yes, I agree that the false positives is a very big issue. Right. But Presently, yes. I have a couple more questions, but maybe someone else can go first. Yeah, maybe I can I ask uh, on top of that what Kunal said. So, uh, so uh, maybe you can also use mic. That yeah. was very helpful. Okay, so I'll speak louder. Is, is it audible now? Yes. Okay, so uh, so when you uh, advertise on uh, social media or maybe newspaper, so uh, so this uh, issues of uh, I mean the cases are killed all, already. I mean, so how do you really tackle such issues in a modern time? Basically. If you say uh, 20, 30 years back when there was no social media, so this would have been the best way. But now, uh, if you need to approach anybody in any, any part of the globe, so you need to spread out on social media. And that itself, uh, I mean, is a risk. I mean, right. everybody knows that this is the case. And then the opposite parties, uh, the, whoever the former family would be, they also come, come to know. <laughs> So right. But I think uh, there can be different uh, ways of uh, knowing. Uh, one thing is, of course, you have to visit and uh, uh, interview multiple uh, people and more neutral informants who are not kind of related to either uh, side of the case, previous personality or the subject side. And neutral patients, I mean, neutral informants may be more uh, reliable in some cases, but if they're jealous of the family getting some in, uh, uh, publicity, then it's become really difficult now. But uh, I think one can still see out the, uh, uh, what is it called, the impurities in the uh, information. I think there should be a way if you have a, uh, but you have to go in a team because sometimes our own biases come into play. Yeah. And that also has to be uh, ruled out. Mm -hmm. We used to record it also. Sometimes recording, uh, those days tape records, uh, recorders were available. But that had a, a drawback because later on when we used to uh, transcribe it, uh, we could not say whose voice was this, you know, who mm -hmm. spoke what and all. So we always used to make very, I didn't show those uh, slides to you, how we used to take note and all because uh, it, we go beyond, much beyond our time. So I think uh, one has to be very carefully uh, examining this uh, information that is available to us. Maybe we used to make several visits 
to the same people, you know, time and again, same religion. As I said, in one case, we had uh, interviewed uh, 41 informants to each at a particular thing. And also, what that... about... yeah, sorry. Yes. Please, 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 please. Yeah, tell me. Go ahead. Yeah, so what about uh, the possibility of uh, approaching different psychiatrists, professional psychiatrists uh, like you, uh, where people would be, might be visiting or may, maybe in general sense, uh, any kind of hospital. Uh, so where you may get such cases, at least get some glimpse of uh, possibilities of such cases. Is that also a source? Uh, That's very less likely, I tell you, because we had one uh, uh, such case, but psychiatrists, I regret to say, they do not much uh, uh, have, first thing, they don't have time. Secondly, they do not uh, have much uh, background uh, training in this. Mm -hmm. So they can very easily put them into certain categories, uh, nosological categories or psychiatric uh, 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 illnesses that because the child is speaking so and so, therefore, because they do not have the background knowledge. So unfortunately, very few people have uh, in India. So, but to the best of my knowledge, uh, nobody really from the psychiatry side has uh, taken any formal training. In the, uh, one person was yeah from Lucknow. He came with us. He was a psychiatrist. Came with us for one trip only, and uh, whatever he has, maybe he's uh, making use of that. I would not deny, but. Uh, I have no information from him. He's never published anything, you know, scientific journal, so we would not know. Whatever has come to the scientific journal is from that University of Virginia group only. Okay. So there are some so, Dr. Doctor, uh, Doctor Paslicha, uh, so it's very interesting. So uh, I just wanted to ask uh, whether you investigated any case uh, of war uh, uh, soldiers uh, wherein um, the soldier of a one country is born in another country, something like that. Uh, this kind of uh, case, because uh, uh, this case this situation is more likely because as uh, in Bhagavad Gita, no Krishna says yam yam vapi spran bhavam tejante kalevaram. So uh, because the, in war time, it is mostly the psychology of the soldier is to kill the other party. So uh, have you encountered any uh, uh, case of this kind which can correlate uh, to this? Yes, uh, I haven't studied, but uh, Professor Stevenson has uh, studied quite a few cases in Burma where they remember the life of a Japanese soldier. I'm oh, sorry, I think it's just by mistake it's come. Hmm. So, what he found was uh, because uh, soldiers, uh, Japanese soldiers, uh, the life of a Japanese soldier, they usually remembered their life, but uh, he had to decipher from their uh, behavioral features actually, because there was no way by which they could have, he could have, uh, or he and his associates uh, in Burma would have uh, been able to verify that life. But their behavioral features, he was convinced that uh, they were definitely, uh, they remembered the correct uh, uh, life of a soldier. No, and, and any cross religion kind of cases? Yes, I have quite a few. In fact, I published all these cases in the books that uh, uh, Professor uh, Jyoti Ranjan has uh, mentioned. Um, quite a few, but not many. Uh, I think I have. And then we have uh, cross religion, uh, Muslim to Hindu, Hindu to Muslim. Then uh, in other countries, uh, some Christians remember their lives, which I'm not be able to, competent to tell you now. But India, definitely I can tell you that I have a few cases of change of religion. Okay, so thank you very much. Uh, I have a couple of more questions uh, from the participants. Whoever has the question, please use the mic because I'm yeah. not... Uh, I, I'll possible. Otherwise, I'm able to hear you, but uh, uh, then I can't register the uh, more than I'll one. Speak louder, I'll speak louder. Now. Okay. okay. Uh, just a minute. Uh, uh, it's okay. I can ask the question if uh, ma'am is okay with it. Who is speaking, please? Uh, Vasuki. Yes. Uh, this is Vasuki. Yeah, yes, this is Vasuki. Uh, hello, ma'am. Firstly, congratulations on the amazing work that you have done. It is nothing short of being landmark. Uh, I've been following your research work from quite some years, and I've always wondered if there's any trend in the distance of uh, the previous life and the new life, as in 
you know, were these bound by physical location or was the previous life in a totally different area as compared to the new one? Mm-hmm. That is my first question. You and the may. second one is, is there any... And if the second question is... Take one question at a time. One question at a time. I know, sure. definitely. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, no problem. Because uh, then what happens is... Uh, anyway, so uh, I think the first question, uh, do you mean to say from one country to another or within a country... Not uh, just country, just, maybe within a country, even India, it could be yes. North India, South India, it could be different parts of the state. Yes. So my question is, is there any variance between the physical location that does play a role? Does the physical yes. location play a role? Mm-hmm. See, uh, I tried to uh, uh, investigate some cases in the North, uh, in the South also, when I was working in Bangalore. But we have definitely more cases in the North uh, than in the South. And uh, in North India, I think people are more open to uh, visitors. And uh, in the South, even for near-death experiences, we had little difficulty in approaching them. So I think they're not very open and there may be some other Uh, reasons. My question was specifically, uh, was there any distance uh, relation between the previous life and the new life? As in the previous person was in a place A, was the new life in the nearby vicinity or was it in a totally different uh, no, location. It's, uh, okay. It varied from a, a few, uh, of course, same family cases, I told you. And then also, uh, <clears throat> there is a, a few uh, yards to several hundred meters, uh, kilometers uh, uh, distance. One case I can uh, remember is from Bareilly to, uh, uh, Bareilly to uh, Varanasi. So it's almost 500 kilometers. And that's a long distance. And it was a very strong case, actually. The father of this child who himself was a lawyer. And he uh, investigated that case uh, first. And then, of course, subsequently we followed it up. So there is a, a large range of, but most of the range of uh, uh, distance between the two uh, case, uh, two uh, personalities. But uh, uh, most of the cases are within a, uh, a short range what we call it's a psychic glow that uh, brings them back to the same uh, area. Okay, thank you. Thank second, you so much. Yes, second question. Yes, I have the second question which is similar. Hmm. Is there any uh, relationship between the time as in the previous person died in so-and-so year and the next person, are they born uh, very soon or is there a lot of time between the new birth? Okay. Have you seen any cases wherein the new birth was at a much later time when compared to the previous person's death? Yes. See, we have uh, uh, generally, the uh, there are outliers anyway. Uh, the range, there's a la- big range, but uh, uh, the, la- the largest I can think of is uh, 14 years in my series. And uh, generally it's uh, 15 months, within 15 months, the average or median uh, uh, intermission, but there are uh, long term, uh, long uh, intermission cases also. Uh, one, as I said, uh, I think you might have read about this, uh, where she is remembered the life in a uh, or much earlier, I think two generations before the present one. But uh, mostly they are within 15 minutes, uh, 15 uh, months. The range is that. Uh, range is larger, but the average or median is 15 months. Okay, sure. Thank you so much. Welcome. Okay, so uh, there are a few more questions. Uh, if you allow, uh, ma'am. So can I go a little more? Uh, we have more time, ma'am. Uh, we have a couple of more questions. Okay. If you have time, I'd be happy to... Yeah, we are, we are available. <laughs> we <have to laughs> because have... I may not be able to answer all the questions. Yeah, but so I'd certainly true. like to share with you whatever uh, little yeah. knowledge I have. So, thank you. Thank you so, for that question. So, Bartika is asking, uh, nice research, Petra Mugman. So, out of curiosity, does the death of previous personality and birth of the child coincide? I think uh, time you already answered, I guess. Uh, do you have anything more to say? In terms of uh, maximal time, as you mentioned, some 15 months or so. Is that no, no. Median is 15 months. Okay, maximum months. in my case was 14 years. 
okay. in my series. And I think together when we studied a few cases, Dr. Stevenson and I, there was one case uh, wherein she uh, uh, was born about two generations before even, or even uh, there was a larger in intermission of, and I don't remember. Okay, okay, thank you. So Ram Chauve is asking, uh, can you discuss or describe some specific cases in detail? So he wants the full story. <laughs> So maybe full stories. I think we need a full <laughs> one maybe, full hour to. Uh, maybe we can uh, refer to your books. So that would be the best way. <laughs> huh? Your books, your um, papers. That would be the best way to. Yes, so I think that would be the best thing. And uh, uh, I have given quite a few in the second. Uh, that the, can the mind survive beyond death? In that, in fact, the first one I had given only six or seven, eight, seven cases. Case histories. So people ask me, why don't you give me give us more uh, uh, case histories? Because some people get more in, uh, interested in the, those. So in the second volume, there are quite a few. Uh, I mean, second book, there are quite a few cases, case histories. Okay, that, that's that's nice. So maybe I would request all our participants uh, uh, they can uh, have a copy of Ma'am's book and uh, they can refer to the articles Ma'am has published. So before I go to some more questions, uh, I would like to announce that uh, we are soon uh, uh, starting our projects on ND and uh, reincarnation. So, uh, so I will be requesting ma'am also to be part of uh, uh, that uh, discussion and uh, help us and guide us. So in that, uh, I would request all the participants, whoever are interested. So please uh, drop a mail to us. I already pasted the links, uh, the email addresses uh, for your convenience and putting it once again. So either you write us on issdaily.info at gmail.com or info at issdaily.com. I have given, actually, I have given my uh, email address on my uh, the first slide. Okay. So if you write to me, maybe I can uh, attend to your. Yeah, sure, sure, sure. So, okay, so there are two hands still raised. Uh, so you can go. Uh, do, you, do you want to ask uh, directly or do you want to place your question? You can unmute yourself. Chaitanya and Leela and uh, Arthur Kuresi. Thank you. Um, namaste. Thank you so yes. much for uh, your presentation. It's such, so wonderful to hear. And um, yes, I, I have a question. I just also wanted to say that I, I'm from England. I'm from the UK and I, I'm the head of a mental health service at a university here and I'm also a psychotherapist, hypnotherapist and I do past life regression as well. Um, so in my work as well, I've and I also uh, study astrology. So in my work also, I, I look into people's past lives but using hypnotherapy and doing past life regression. So I would love to, you know, uh, be more involved if, if there's any way I'm actually coming to India um, tomorrow. <laughs> I'm, I'm flying to India tomorrow to get married, but. Um, I'd love to meet um, anyone if, if possible. I'd, I'd really love to uh, work or maybe do something together. But um, I will have a question, which was in these cases, where, was, there, was there anything um, found out about perhaps the purpose? So why these particular children were remembering that particular life? Was there any sort of reason, purpose that were that that soul was trying to fulfill through re that recall of the past life? Uh, there could be one was, of course, uh, this uh, more traumatic experiences that they had, but we have also cases where they did not have a very traumatic. There are different uh, uh, reasons given by these children. Uh, I do not have a ready answer for this, but uh, violent death, mode of death was one reason uh, of remembering because this was, uh, one has kind of gone through it himself. So these children remember uh, their previous lives and then their love for the previous family. Then there was unfinished business there they had to uh, complete. Uh, I remember having uh, uh, listed that somewhere, uh, this uh, also that why they uh, remember, uh, some of them remember, but they have different reasons. As I said, one uh, lady, for example, she had uh, left a young child, very young child, and then she died. So uh, she, that was the kind of unfinished business. And she would play uh, mother. She would collect some uh, stones actually 
treat them as children. So very young age, they start, uh, as I said, behavioral features. They start showing, reliving their previous life. So one could be unfinished business. Another one would be a, a violent mode of death, then special attachments. Uh, right now I can think of three, these three only, but uh, I have listed them uh, somewhere in one of these books. Thank you so much. Thank you. Welcome. Afrin Kureshi, would you like to ask? Uh, good evening, ma'am. I'm Afrin and I'm also, um, I'm, uh, I'm in my third year of doing psychology honours and I'm also looking forward for clinical psychology in future for my master's. Um, so ma my question was that like in uh, like very normal cases every day, not uh, past life, uh, there are like various traumatic cases, like uh, example, child abuse. So in the cases of past life, uh, past life, uh, like, you know, past uh, people who remember their past life, uh, what is the next step you do? Like if there's a tr uh, child abuse case or there's a very uh, acute traumatic case for, for the children. So what do we do in such cases? Like if it is not uh, and in the like normal cases, we do use like EMDR and other therapies for uh, trauma. But what do we do in these cases if there's okay. such huge trauma? I don't want to dampen your enthusiasm, mm -hmm. but uh, I think we're digressing from the uh, today's topic. You're talking purely about the clinical uh, cases uh, that uh, you can perhaps uh, discuss with any clinical psychologist who are uh, trained by us uh, from NIMAS, and there are quite a few in Delhi, but yeah. Yeah, isn't it? So if it was something related to the uh, past life or uh, the reincarnation, Today. Oh, yeah, and I'm on another question was like in past life regression, how accurate is like if a person doesn't remember anything about the past life and it, it, it if the person goes through the past life regression, so how how much is it like accurate? I think this past life regression itself, uh, I do not subscribe to that much because uh, there can be very many flaws. So I personally don't uh, subscribe to that. Yes. Right. Okay. Can we? Uh, uh, Dr. Saab, one more question, a little question. Uh, do you have any case where people remember the in between uh, time, uh, what was uh, there? Uh, I mean, from the previous birth to this birth, what was what has happened in between? So, uh -huh. do you have any story of uh, that period? We have only two or three cases, but in Thailand, there are quite a few cases that Steve, Dr. Stevenson had uh, uh, studied. And uh, these are, I think, uh, I have I can remember one case where he said that he had gone to uh, I think it's very uh, much like uh, near death experiences that he had gone to the other world and there he stayed and whatever now we do not uh, we have no way of verifying that and uh, uh, very few uh, one said that he was sitting on a um, tree uh, in discarnate uh, form then when his fa father was passing through on a bike so he came along with him. So these kind of the, uh, few uh, examples, I mean, few um, descriptions we have received, but other than that, I don't remember. Okay, okay. So no pattern kind of thing? Uh, was no about. pattern, no pattern in this, uh, particularly in this uh, group of cases or our series of cases that we have studied. But some, uh, as I said, in Thailand, some people have mentioned about the uh, in-between, what happened during the intermission period. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much. Any further questions for the participants? Or the... You have more questions? I think we have to call it a day now. Yeah, I think so. I think so. Thank, thank you very much, ma'am, uh, for your time and patiently answering our questions. Uh,